Only about 4,200 pounds and only 25 foot, pretty much on the nose, tip to tail. The 20 RDSE, very easy. Singles, couples, or interestingly, maybe small family camper landing for another season here at Halet RV. And this is one of those floor plans that it, it, it's like bread, milk, and eggs. It's, the, it's that core staple kind of product that you find at a lot of dealerships, and for good reason. Like I said, this can work for a single person running around. It doesn't even have to be a couple's model, although I think it lends itself very well to that. But interestingly, with an extra large rear dinette, I think it can actually work pretty nicely also for like buddy camping, hunting camping, something like that. Or uh, maybe you've got a, uh, a a larger kid. You are like a one and done household, kind of like me. I had the one kid and I said, ah, you know, I love her, but that's enough. <laughs> but um, it gives you a big sleeping space in the back, way bigger than like a lot of bunks could ever hope to have. The interesting thing too, is a lot of times when you're in a simple, no slide camper like this, it's a pretty simple thing. Like it feels like more of a stripped down box. That is not the case on one of these Cherokees. Actually, the thing that surprises me the most is how kind of loaded it really is. And this is what I call a dynamite in small packages kind of camper. Because there's there's big dynamite features going on here. Like this big wraparound lounge in the back, surrounded by all those windows. If you just want it to, to, to look and feel big and wide open, you pull all those shades up. Maybe you're, you're parked somewhere like you can back this thing up to the lake or the woods or like a, a big scenic view or something like that. Although what I am scenically viewing is that we need to get this thing through the wash bay because uh, whatever shipping slime has rolled down the back window there. Good news though, we don't charge you to clean the RV from Halo RV. And as dumb as that sounds like doing things like cleaning it, showing you how it works, that kind of stuff, we do that at no additional charge. That is not a uh, necessarily uh, common practice in the RV industry. Plenty of other dealerships do it. Plenty of them do not. Now, even just little things like this, Having the bathroom located directly across from the main entry door, and it's between what you will see is the two different sleeping spaces, it creates a nice level of privacy back here. Um, if you're looking for a little bit of, you know, campsite party time, you can crank up the stair. That's a little ceiling mounted subwoofer right there. And I wish there was a way I could get you really good audio samples because it does sound pretty darn good. Now, obviously I've got this in lounge mode right now, but you see those two little pedestal mounts down there in the floor. Well, that's where the RD of the RDSE comes in. This is a big, giant rear dinette back here that, again, it really speaks to the, the convertible nature and flexibility of this floor plan. And if the sun shines just being a touch too much, you can always pull those shades like I've done right here, and you can see that you can maintain maximum privacy. And where that's going to be really cool is if you are using this back here as a sleeper. Because folks, this, uh, for a little what's probably considered couples camper, has one of the best secondary guest sleeping spaces you're going to find out there. Because this thing has, like, a huge, what I call, true u dinette. It's actually got a big space where a big, kind of, Pillsbury Doughboy, dad bod guy like me can lay down and stretch out. And I could actually make it through the night here pretty comfortably. I mean, my feet don't touch. My head doesn't touch here. You know, if I ET phone home stretch everything, I still can't touch everything. This is great. This is an actual adult-sized sleeper. Guest sleeper, main sleeper, whatever you want to call it. And that's where I think this one is really cool. Oh, God, I gotta I gotta get back to the core exercises. My uh, Just even sitting up like that, my stomach's like, quit it. Yeah, anyway, enough about me. <laughs> and by the way, Notice I, I did take my boots off so I'm not stomping my boots all over someone else's furniture. I really do appreciate you folks and I do respect what will be eventually someone else's property, you know. But this could be just a one-person camper and have a nice big rear lounge, dinette, whatever works for you. It can be a great couples camper for people who I call like slide skeptics. Maybe you're like, I don't, I, I, I'm nervous about taking care of a slide. I, I've seen stories on the internet and whether they're true or not, it's it's bothering me. I don't want to get involved in that. Great. Sweat. Uh, no sweat. No problem. Sweat? What? Um, <laughs> and then um, if you have like one big teenage kid, think about that. The teenage kids are probably not going to be camping with you that much longer. Do you really want to spend a bunch of money on a bunkhouse that you're only going to use for a couple years and then get rid of it? This, a teenage kid could use this. And frankly, 
You don't even need to necessarily set up the whole table thing. There's enough room here on this rear bench that if you had to, you could make it work. Now, this would probably work better for a little. For a big adult, you might want to set up the whole thing. It just depends on what you need to do. Or is it hunting camp season? Are you going to go get the turkey pointer? Um, you know, do you want to have one person up here, one person back here? Are we not comfortable sharing a sleeping space? Because that's a very private, personal place. No judgment. I get that. Everybody camps different. That's what's cool about this one. At a glance, it's a simple entry level camper. I think though, when you look at all the equipment on this, all the features, the function of it, I think this is just a really compact, smarter class camper. That's, that's my two cents on it. Spinning around from the dinette here, giving you a good look at everything. The kitchen in this is simple, but effective, especially when you have the sink cover and the stove top in place. Um, it gives you some decent counter space. I mean, it's not as big as a giant fifth wheel, but it's the whole RV is not as big as a giant fifth wheel. I think they did the best they could. If you are interested, uh, you could get a little pedestal TV or you could mount one on the walls because roughly every 16 inches on center, you've got yourself a stud. And you see that wall trim, both through the ceiling and the walls. They use a, uh, a nice T-molded plastic kind of click-in-place trim. And the reason I like that is because it's not just like a, uh, it's not a, a, a seam tape that can get humid and kind of, uh, you know, peel with exposure. And once again, what really shocks me here is that this again is, it's the most simplified series of tandem axle campers that the Cherokee group makes. Yet, uh, I mean, it, it's packed. It's packed with stuff. Like you see that uh, removable kind of cutting board backsplash cover right there. It actually magnets in place, which is kind of cool. The uh, counter space in this admittedly is, is rather limited, but in such a small trailer, I think they best they, they did the best they could really. High rise sprayer faucet and a big farm sink means we can actually get pots and pans cleaned in here. And look at the double big drawers. Little campers like this sometimes have no drawers whatsoever. And just to kind of get it out of the way, that is the uh, the sink cover there uh, sitting on the stovetop door. Not intending to represent that as countertop space, so just kind of keep that in mind. But we're not done because it, the, the kitchen is kind of split and you sort of walk through it. Right over here, you see a big floor to ceiling six and a half foot pantry. That, you know, they could have they could have just left it open and just put some nice doors on it and maybe used half as many shelves, but they gave you a ton of storage there as a result. And that is one of those big 10.7 cubic foot DC compressor fridges. And these are the size of an eight cubic foot two-way fridge, but the way that they get you more storage is because there's no propane unit needed on the backside of this thing, they're deeper. It's not that they're a taller, it's not that they're wider, it's that they're a deeper storage space. Now... There's a lot of people who are going to look at a little camper like this and say, man, I want to go off grid. That's where the juice pack and the lithium friendly converter here that we're looking at. The juice pack solar option is a handy little battery tender. It'll just help keep some lights and some fans running longer. Helps keep the fridge on a uh, nice chunk longer also. But you can just straight shut everything off so you don't have battery bleed. That's like a gas tank gauge for your battery. And again, that 55 amp converter right there, first of all, it will help uh, redirect more power when you are hooked up or on a generator back to the battery to get that charged up. Secondly, it is lithium capable. So it can be used with lead acid batteries, lithium batteries, all kinds of things. But we're not done with the storage because that is yet another thing this dinette does really, really well. Because this whole thing is just a huge storage trunk, basically. Now, it doesn't have any sort of easy lift access. It doesn't have any sort of like baggage doors. And if I'm being fair, that's like maybe the one criticism I have. The one thing I wish I could personally change on this floor plan is I would like to see some kind of easier access to just all of that storage space below the dinette right there. But man, I feel like if that's the, the biggest... I don't know, gripe, the big, the biggest suggestion. I might, Overall, I, I'd say they're doing pretty well because show me another little camper like this that gives us all of this amazing breeze through window coverage. Oh, oh, and here's another big deal feature. How about the fact that this is the, uh, as far as I'm aware, the only thing in its class that has a standardized larger 15,000 BTU Coleman quiet air conditioner. That is a game changer. If you're lucky, you can option that on, not to mention the fact that it's centralized. 
by having central air ducting through the entire roof, you get more even cooling. A lot of little campers like this don't even offer central air. If they do, it might be an upgrade. Rarely is it even standard. This is an amazing floor plan with so many good qualities that bigger campers have that little campers just very often don't. And you know, I, I hope you appreciate where I'm willing to even say, even about the products that we carry sometimes where I think it could be better or something I'd like to see different, you know? Maybe where you could argue and say it's a shortcoming. I also understand that not having baggage doors like that, they're eliminating seal points in a camper that I think with no slides is something that is a major goal for a lot of people. It's also eliminating cost, you know? There's there's benefits to not having baggage doors there. It's There's a more even insulation throughout the walls. So hopefully if you appreciate the AB side of that there and the fact that we're, we're willing to really try to help you find your second camper the first time, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and know that we will always do our best to shoot you straight here at Halo RV. Because if it's not this one, we definitely have something else that could work, but we always want you to know that you can buy with, with just the utmost of confidence from our family-owned and operated facility. And even the little details like this impress me with Cherokee. And they didn't always used to do this. They, because they become such a, an alpha company, they can demand better materials in their builds, like plywood decking under the dinette. Chances are, you never would have thought twice about it, but the fact that they're using better materials down here, and this is 3 8 plywood. They don't use this in, a, in other areas. Like we're walking on 5 8 tongue and groove plywood. They have a, a 3 8 OSB roof decking that uh, on a fully walkable roof. This is purposely brought in just for this reason. So nothing on this camper is scrap. The camper isn't made from secondary materials. And it's, it, again, it's just proof that simple, small, lightweight, and less expensive doesn't have to mean cheap as in chintzy. It can just mean cheap as in not as expensive as some of the other stuff, you know? And one quick look without everything all opened up and in your face before we flip around the other direction. Uh, important note, I think, is that privacy curtain there for the front bed. I do think most people, as much as I've talked about the dinette and the sleeper, I think most people use this as a couple's kind of coach. But even then, even if you're not going to have a guest, it is kind of nice to pull that curtain and feel a little bit more privatized, you know what I mean? Full viewing window in the entry door. Cherokee really paying attention to customer feedback, and that is one of the things basically everybody asked for. Frankly, last year, I also missed it. And I'm, I'm really glad to see them do that. Uh, and this big viewing window and breeze window over here, this is uh, uh, one of those really nice kind of features where, you know, it gives you a lot of light in the bedroom. It makes the whole room look and feel larger, not to mention the airflow. And again, simple series camper, allegedly, but we're getting things like household and USB plugs on both sides of the bed. Now, those USB plugs are also a uh, uh, like a, a charging mount for a specific portable Bluetooth speaker, and those things are handy. It's very similar to the Furion Lit speaker you may have heard me talk about. If you're curious about those, um, I'll shoot you a, a link to like the, the thing that I did on the Furion Lit speaker so you can learn a little bit more about it. Now, this is a camp queen. This is 60 by 74, also called a short queen. And if you appreciate the fact that I go ahead and get that stuff out of the way, hit that subscribe button, or at least leave me notes. And hey, thanks for letting me, you know, let me know there, guy. If you wanted to go to an 80 inch queen, you could, but it's gonna go right up here against this wall. And finally, the bathroom in more detail. The thing is here, the features that are outstanding on this RV are boring, commonplace features on a lot of other RVs, like a skylight, a shower surround panel, an easy step in shower, not a tub. You know, that's that's normal stuff in the RV industry. Surprise. But at this size, class, price point, things like that, things like, uh, you know, good counter space in the bathroom, a full big medicine cabinet, and this big XL vent fan. These are incredibly outstanding uh, features that really, I think, speak to the fact that Cherokee's just really good. If they're really good at one thing, if they're, if they're the best at one thing, it's consistency. They're so good at doing the same thing the same way every time and doing it right. And man, not only does this just look good, for 25 feet tip to tail, they packed a lot into it. Under our power awning over here, you've of course got LED lighting, but notice the speakers are down low where they're not blowing the neighbors away. Got a little drunken uncle leash latch over here, which is good for more than just the four-legged furry friends. It can also do things like keep your, you know, patio furniture from blowing away at night. Now, uh, in front of that wheel, behind those stable steps, you see the propane cooker hooker right there. If you want to do a little bit of outside grilling, 
directly under the awning so that on a rainy day, you can pop in and out of that door uh, and, uh, you know, be able to check whatever brats or burgers or whatever you're cooking at a given time. Now, remember, you got that full viewing window in the entry door, but you don't see it out here. It's basically like a full glass front door. It's like a, a tempered glass kind of material. Um, and sometimes people might ask, uh, what happens if that door gets hit? Well, on, on the same token, what happens if that window gets hit? It just doesn't really tend to happen. Most um, wind push, wind buffeting, stone deflection happens on the nose of the trailer. The side walls of the trailer, uh, largely, you know, everything slip streams around them. So you don't really tend to get too much of uh, that aggressive uh, impact there. It's not that it can't happen. It's just that it's extremely, extremely unlikely. It's I, I think only twice in my career I've ever seen a, a window on the side of an RV blown out from a rock getting thrown in transit. Double propane tanks and the Cherokee Quick Jack. Look at this. Eight seconds up and down is all it takes to, uh, you know, run this thing right here. But what's really cool about this now, oh, by the way, keep in mind, this one is obviously a little bit different from that sample footage that actually came off a of wolf pup. This one, the spinner, spinnerator, <laughs> is on the front. That's where you're going to hook your drill up. And this thing right here, it might hit that pole, but the that that still spins independently. So no big deal there. Extra thick uh, aluminum nose skin. That's actually 67% thicker than the sidewall skin. Again, with the idea of being wind and stone deflection. Over here, we've got ourselves the uh, your, your stinky slinky hookup station, as it were. And then above that, our outside utility shower and black tank flush. And once again, these are these are like features that you find on a lot of big RVs all the time. That's not an uncommon feature. What is uncommon about it is that you're getting it here in this size, weight, class, and price point. Similarly, you got that handy little fold down cargo rack on the back. With that, you see that third tail light right there? That is a cool safety feature Cherokee started applying. And above that, another safety feature that's now factory standard from this group a uh, uh, backup camera, a rear view camera. So, you know, if you need it for a little bit of campsite security, or if you, uh, you know, obviously going down the road, need to see if some person's tailgating, or if you're backing into a campsite, whatever works. One thing I do want to mention real quick here is the spare tire on this is actually optional. Uh, that being said, at Halo RV, you're going to find that we're going to put that on there about 10 times out of 10. Another really more recent update is the fact that on the SE series Grey Wolves, the simple series that we're looking at, they finally now have an enclosed underbelly, something they did not have before. They just keep getting better. So folks, thank you very much for staying tuned with us here. If you found this information uh, useful, beneficial, maybe, maybe a little bit entertaining, I don't know, hit that subscribe button and follow along. And remember, we're family owned and operated. We need and appreciate your support to keep the things, uh, keep the videos rolling out of here. So thank you very, very much. And leave me some comments. Let me know, what do you like about this one? Is there anything you'd change? Or do you have any questions? And I'll do my best to fill in. Now remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone. I'm gonna go take off my coat. This is, this is beautiful. my boots back on by the way it, you guys you can stop sending me screenshots of my own feet saying what are those <laughs> i i know they're dumb <laughs>